up, class. Uh, all right, so this is the year 2003 uh, AP exam, uh, free response section, and we're going to try to go over these questions together. Now, uh, number one through three, we could use calculators. So those of you who has calculator with you, please bring them. And then uh, let's try to do this question together. So now, first, we have y equals square root of x. That must be right here. And then we have y equals e to the negative 3x. So it must be right over here. Now, given that vertical line is x equals 1, which is right over here. And, in fact, first we need to find the uh, area r. That means, in order for us to find the area r, it is very important for us to find this intersection. Now, so then in this case, uh, what we like to do is, we like to use the calculator to figure out uh, the intersection. So we have, first one was square root of, oops, square root of x, that would be the first, first one, and then second one was e to the negative 3x. Close the parentheses. So now, when you come through this one, you can see from here uh, that they will be coming together. Now, if you're to zoom, uh, if you're to use a zoom standard number six, you'll realize that uh, they're coming together, which is kind of hard to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit. Number two, and you, we should be able to see a better picture right there. So as you can see, uh, what we like to do here is that if you bring, make it just a little bit larger, so. This value that we are looking at is the, this value right, right here we have. So we just have to get the intersection. Now, in order for us to get the intersection, I'm going to just get rid of this one for now. Uh, we're going to go for a second. Calc intersect number five. That's the first curve. That's the second curve. And then let's guess it. So that's the value that we'll end up getting. So those of you who knows uh, some, uh, you know, TI calculators, we could use this value 0.2387 blah 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 blah, or we can simply store that uh, when you type in x now, you will realize that that's exactly the same value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button STO store and then I'll just put that as alpha a from now on whenever I uh, type in a that would be equal to that value right here so now uh, given that what we like to do is find the area r now in order for us to find the area r we have to go for upper minus lower then our expression for this uh, first answer would have been something like this Integral from 0.2387 to 1, upper one was square root of x, minus lower one was e to the negative 3x. Dx. Now, uh, in order for us to use that calculator for that function, what we like to do is we're just going to go back and then make it invisible for both of them. But now for the uh, now, now for the third function, what we like to do it was it was a, uh, this expression minus this expression. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go for the vars y vars function, the first one minus once again vars y vars function second one. Now see y3 now will be the first one minus the second one just like what we have done right over here then when you graph this one we'll be getting something like this now what we want to do is second calc 
number seven. Now lower limit, remember lower limit was our A value, so I'm just gonna type in A. That's the lower limit. Upper limit now is one, as the question said. There it goes. So therefore, oops. That becomes our answer. Our answer becomes therefore point four four two six. Now we want to find that the volume, but uh, revolved around horizontal line y equals one. So now then, in this case, if you have to use this y equals one, it would have been somewhere around here. So if you have to revolve this one around that uh, line. revolving around it in this way then we will realize that uh, we have to use the washer method or you know subtraction of two disk method so when you look at it the bigger radius from here to here let's call that as capital R smaller radius will be this one small r how do you calculate the bigger r it will be this whole distance which means once again upper minus lower which ends up in one minus e to the negative 3x. Smaller r will be 1 minus that line which is square root of x. That's what we end up getting. Now, then using those two radii, b would have been pi, once again same value, 0.2387 Two, one big R square which was 1 minus e to the negative 3x whole thing square minus 1 minus square root of x square dx notice this was the small radius inner radius and this one was the bigger radius now we have to use the calculator to solve these then I'm going to go back to y equals here. Now, uh, only thing that I'm going to change is the y3. Because we have pi already uh, multiplying at the end. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to calculate the... Oops. Uh, we're just going to calculate the, this, uh, this expression first. And then we're going to multiply that by pi. Now... Then we have uh, clear. So one minus uh, it was this one to have the big R. So we're going to go for boss y boss function and number two square. That was the big R square minus one minus. Small on var, vars, y vars function. Okay. Now square that. Then what we like to do here is once you graph this one, once you graph this one, all right. So what's going to be happening is we will uh, calculate once again integral from low limit was a. And upper limit was 1. And that's the value that we'll end up getting now. But we're not done yet. Even though I'm going to put this one down here. But we have to, uh, as you can see, we have to multiply that by pi. Then our answer will be, I'm going to, right? And if I type in answer, you will realize that, that that was the value that we would have gotten. And then multiply that by pi and 1.42. All right, so that becomes our value. Our value, therefore, becomes 1.42.
four, two, three, six. It comes out value. All right, that was number B. Number C, uh, find the region R. Uh, I mean, if uh, the region R is the base of the solid, now, uh, it's a rectangle whose height is five times the length. Now, so basically what we are saying is that we have new, uh, I'm going to use the green for this question. We have new solid where the base is perpendicular to uh, x axis and also uh, has the rectangle that looks like this. Then I'll attempt to we have a rectangle right here many rectangles along this uh, region but where the height is five times the length that means rectangle is five uh, an area of the rectangle here will then be uh, length times five times the length which basically is equal to 5L square. Now, how are we going to apply that to find this uh, volume of the solid? Volume here becomes then integral from 0 0.2387 and 5. And then the L was the length from here to here. In other words, square root of x minus uh, e to the negative 3x uh, square. Yes, that becomes our answer. Now, so we're going to put this one in the calculator. So y equals, now, what I'm going to do here, once again, I'm going to clear this one five times. This one minus this one, so we're going to have our boss, y boss, function, y sub 1 minus, same thing, boss, y boss, This one square. Now, and as you can see, that is the expression five times the length squared. That's basically what we are looking at. So, there we have it. And we're going to uh, graph it. Why don't we just go for the second count right away? Number seven. What is our lower bound? Low limit was A, if you remember, we are using that value over and over again. And upper limit was 1. Once you calculate, that becomes our final answer. Therefore, now our answer becomes 1.55. Four, four. There it goes. That's the answer, answer for number one. I believe we have answered everything then. All right, now, then let's go for the question number two. Here still we have a, a, a calculator question. Now, a particle is moving along the x-axis, so the velocity is given in this way. So first, I would like to start with the red. That's the velocity. At time t is equal to zero, the particle uh, is that position x equals 1. Now, that's the initial condition that we are looking at. Now, find the acceleration. Now, A, how are we going to find the acceleration when t equals t? Uh, 2. Now, acceleration here is simply we have to find the derivative of the velocity will be the acceleration. Now, when you take the uh, derivative here, we obviously we can see that it's, we have to use a product rule. So first, we're going to have negative t plus 1 times. Uh, in fact, you know what we're going to do? Instead of uh, actually taking the derivative of all these values uh, and doing it by hand, why don't we try to do this one with the calculator? So what I'm going to do is y equals clear, clear, clear. Now, it was negative, I believe it was t plus 1. So here we're going to have x 
plus 1 and we, I believe we had sine uh, x squared over 2. So x squared over 2. Right? Uh, make sure your mode is on the radian. Okay, so that there we have it. Now, that is the first expression. Uh, and our domain is seems to be um, there. Okay, t here is going from zero to three, and that seems to be the our domain. So what I'm going to do is this: I will simply set the window. Uh, how about from negative one? To four, just to incorporate, uh, embrace zero through three uh, domain, and then we're going to go for zoom fit. What a zoom fit do is uh, what a zoom a zoom fit does is that it keeps the x values and change the y values automatically for you. So that you will have optimal view of the graph. So that's what we have here. Now, when we want to take the derivative, second calc right here number six now derivative but the value of x here was when t was equal to two then when you calculate uh two when x equals two press enter there it goes that's the value that we are looking at so here what, what, I'm, uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply erase this portion And I realize the value will be 1.5178 Okay, let me just rewrite it here. It's kind of messy. 1.5876. Now, uh, I don't see any unit, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Now, we answered the first part. Acceleration was this one. Is the speed of the particle increasing? Now, speed will increase as long as the velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Now, we can see that acceleration is positive. What, uh, but when you look at the graph, since it's under the x-axis, what do you realize about the uh, speed, I mean the velocity? Here we have velocity is negative. Therefore, since they are working in opposite direction, where acceleration is positive, velocity is negative, we will realize that uh, is the speed of the particle increasing? No. The particle particle speed is not increasing since acceleration is positive yet velocity is negative all right now Number B, uh, B, I'll do it with blue here. Find all times t in the open interval from 0 to 3 when the particle changes the direction. Change the direction. That means uh, velocity has to go from positive to negative or negative to positive. That's what it means. So, uh, once again, let me write that up one more time. Change of directions of the particles implies that V goes from positive to negative or the other way around. When do you see that? Uh, 0 through 3, so we have from here T is equal to 1, uh, T is equal to 1, 2, and 3. Obviously we see that right over here, but we, we actually have no idea what's happening in this section. So therefore, why don't, we, uh, why, don't, why don't we get very close to it and just zoom in to see what happens here. Zoom in number two. And it's about x equals uh, 0.5. So I'm going to just type in 0.5. Whoops, nope. 
I'll zoom in, I guess I have to I'm nearby. That's it once, and they're coming down. And then it doesn't go back up anyway. All right, so therefore, only time where it, uh, where it changes direction will be right over here. So therefore, what I'm going to do is this. Uh, I'm going to zoom out. And I will look for that particular point by calculating for zero left bound. Okay, it seems to be about three, so I'm gonna put three right over here, and that's the left bound. Oh no, left bound was two. I'm sorry. I'm gonna redo it. And zero. Uh, left bound was two. Right bound has to be three around here. We can simply type it in and then guess yes and we end up getting that value right over there so there we have it change direction right over there so when t is equal to 2.5 Oh, six, six. All right. Justify your answer, and then justification will be this one. Now, number C. Number C, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the green. Uh, find the total distance is traveled from 0 to 3. Now, when you think about the total distance, notice the word uh, distance, not a displacement. That means what's happening is... Uh, when the velocity is negative versus what velocity is positive, those two distances will not, uh, those two displacements will not cancel out. We need to add up everything. So, so therefore, what I'm going to do is this C then is equal to V of T. What we need to have is integral from 0 to 3 of the absolute value of V of T. Meaning everything would be, uh, you know, uh, uh, positive because the distance implies the absolute value uh, dt but when you actually calculate this one we need to separate this into two parts as you can see right over there and right over here so that's equal to uh, from 0 through 2.5066 of v of t dt and then plus uh, 2.506 uh, to what we have here. 3 of V of T. Now, but when you think about it, uh, from 0 through 2.5, the velo uh, velocity, since the velocity is negative, we'll realize that this placement will be also negative. Uh, that means to make, the, to make the negative into positive, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply uh, apply this negative sign over here so that it will become positive displacement. But this one is already positive, so we don't have to worry about that. Now then, what I'm going to do is, uh, since x value, the, the point where it changes is this long value, so I'm going to go back a uh, second quit and then clear clear x if you remember it was that value I'm going to store that as a once again now if I stored it as a then it will uh, we, uh, it will override the previous value of a therefore we don't have any problem with it as you, as you can see if I type in a once again we will get that value now, then, uh, now what we're going to calculate is second calc number seven. Lower limit was equal to zero. Upper limit was equal to A, as you can see. 
then we will end up getting negative value as you uh, as you have noticed so uh, we have to as I mentioned earlier we have to negate this value with the negative sign to make it into positive we'll do that right after well for now what I'm going to do is this I'm going to uh, go back to the value here now if I type in answer it will still remember my last calculation which was this one now what I'm going to do is this I'm gonna uh, get negation of the answer because it has to be positive but I'm gonna store that as maybe we'll store that as B because we, we will uh, we'll have to uh, add them up later so I'm gonna press enter now so B is that area first section area now we need to find the rest of the area now number seven lower limit was a so and then upper limit was three and there it goes so that is but this one is already positive so we don't have to worry about that that much uh, all we have to do is using the calculator to add them up now what I'm going to do is this I'm gonna quit if I store the previous answer now see remember that was the area all I have to do now is simply adding B and C then that would be my answer B plus C there it goes that's how we can use the calculator so the value is 4.3338 so our final answer for this one is 4.3338 all right so that was uh, C we have to answer D D I'll do it with black color during the time interval from 0 to 3 uh, what is the greatest distance between the particle and the origin now that means greatest distance this implies the farthest away Uh, uh, yeah for this away <laughs> uh, from the origin now then show your work that leads to your answer for this away that, that basically means uh, greatest displacement greatest displacement because if you think about it when uh, t was equal to zero it was at the origin as you can see oh, when t was equal to zero uh, it was a uh, the value was equal to one. That means what we end up getting is this. Uh, since this portion is negative, right? Since this portion is negative, uh, what we have to do is we just have to get the uh, uh, we have to figure out when the greatest. In this case, the word greatest implies the maximum. Now then, in, in order for us to calculate D, how are we going to get the max displacement? Maximum, displa uh, maximum displacement is basically we have to find the critical values uh, and then also check up on the endpoints. Now, uh, critical value, as we have noticed before, it was uh, 2.566 so what we're going to do is we need to find that position when t is equal to uh, 2.5066 along with t equals 3 and also t is equal to 0 you see we need to check up on the endpoints now, the first one we know already, uh, when t was equal to 0, the value of x was equal to, or location was equal to 1. Now, how about when t was equal to 2.5? When t was equal to 2.5, as we calculated before, here, this is the interval. Now, that means uh, 
from uh, from one we have moved towards the left by uh, three point two six. That means what we end up getting is uh, our location was from one. We moved backwards by three point two six uh, five. Now that uh, this basically translates into negative two point two six five. That that was the location of the particle when t was equal to uh, two point uh, five zero six six. Now when t is equal to three, now when t is equal to three is that means uh, as you can see from here it was a positive the value right here. That means x was at the one moved away towards left by this much but we moved toward uh, to the right because it's positive area to the right by 1.068 now obviously this one will be less than this value or closer to the origin so therefore our answer will be maximum displacement will happen right here if we fall this away so therefore our answer is uh, what is the greatest distance? So greatest distance is distance basically is max absolute value of max displacement distance as is it uh, As in the scalar factor, so we end up having negative 2.265. So our answer is 2.265 becomes our final answer. Now, number three. Yes, we're going slow, but it's okay. Uh, number three first. Now, that is the chart that we have, and then this is the graph. Uh, as you can see here, rate of the fuel consumption and then time. And this is the chart uh, for these graphs. Notice that these values are the rate of the fuel consumption. Not the actual rate, but this is the rate. That means the area is the antiderivative of the rate. That means the area here, we can see that area must be the fuel consumption. Now, then the rate of the fuel consumption in gallons, uh, gallons per minute, uh, we can buy twice differential, which simply means that it, you can take the derivative of two times, a strictly increasing function, as you can see over there. Now, uh, use the data from the table to find the approximation of this. R prime of 45. R prime of 45 is right over here, between 40 and 50. Now, how are we going to find that R prime of right at that point we're gonna we can only approximate it uh from the uh you know average rate of change that can be the only approximation for the instantaneous rate of change then um and in this case notice that indicate units of measures so we're gonna do a two to find our prime of 45 we would like to approximate Oh, using the mean, basically mean value theorem. R of 50 minus R of 40 over 50 minus 40. We will be using those two sets of values over there. Now then it becomes 55 minus 40. We can use the calculator if you want to. Then we'll end up getting 1.5. Now, what is the, uh, uh, this is the derivative against time. So original uh, weight, original unit for weight was gallons per minute. But in this case, we already had a gallons. Per minute, but since we're taking the derivative against time, we're going to have minute square on the bottom. 
All right, now, number B. Number B, we like to use the red. If the rate of the fuel consumption is increasing fastest, increasing fastest, all right, at time t is equal to uh, 45 minutes, what is the value of? Uh, double derivative, uh, double derivative of 45. Now, when you look into double derivative of 45, that means uh, same value here. What we can do here is that uh, we got to figure out double derivative. Double derivative is change of the change. So now, then uh, what we can do is what is the change uh, between 30 to 40? And 40, uh, and then 40 to 50, and then 50 to 70. Yeah, but when you look into this question, uh, since it says increasing the fastest, increasing implies the r prime. Fastest implies the r prime is the maximum. How can you have r prime to be the maximum? R prime is the maximum that implies that uh, this would be the local maximum in the twice differential function. That means R double prime of meaning the double derivative, which is the derivative of the derivative, this one should be equal to zero. Just like having the local maximum where the first derivative or first derivative of the given function is equal to zero, just like that. Here the first the original function in this case would have been R prime. Being the max, that means the derivative of r prime, which is double derivative, will be equal to zero. All right, number C. So here, uh, left Riemann sum uh, with the five subintervals. Now, uh, then left Riemann sum. How are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to do C here. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four. So we have thirty. So we notice that the bases are not uh, even. So What we have to do is notice that this difference is equal to 30. Well, left Riemann sum, that means we'll, we'll be picking up this value. So 30 times 20. Next one is 10. Next base is also 10. Next base is 20. And the last base is 20. Notice that it's not quite even, so we have to be careful about that. Then what we end up getting is uh, from 0 through 90. Will be simply 30 times 20, or well, approximately, right? 30 times 20 for the first rectangle, and 10 times 30 plus another 10 times, I believe it was 40, and plus 20 times 55 plus. 20 times 65. All right, so when you calculate all the all these things, uh, with your calculator, you can do that too, in fact. Uh, let me just do it, why not? Uh, I'm just gonna go up right here. So 30 times 20, plus 10 times, uh, I believe it was 30, 40, 55. 30 plus 10 times 40 plus 20 times 55 plus 20 times 65. Therefore, it becomes 3,700. Now, uh, indicate. Uh, now we have to we have to see that is this the uh, less than the value or greater than? Now, when you look at it, 
You can do a few examples here. Zerotiru, Jodi. You can see that each time, and then oh, 30 through 40, you will realize the rectangles are smaller than the actual value. Uh, 70. Okay. Therefore, our sum must be the under approximation. All right, now that works. That was C. Now D, for zero through nine, they explain the meaning of this in terms of the fuel consumption. As you talked about it, this will be the uh, area. Now, I use the blue. Now this one talks about the area under R of T. But as I mentioned earlier, since this is the rate, the area simply becomes the amount uh, of the fuel consumed. So this basically means amount of, of a consumed fuel. Four, uh, T goes from zero to B. Now, explain the meaning of this. And this, you see, is the fuel consumed. And then one over B, this basically means, uh, this is the amount of fuel, uh, amount of consumed fuel. But if you divide it by B, as in the time, this rep represents the average value, meaning the value here is the uh, consumed fuel, average uh, amount of consumed fuel. indicate the unit of measure once again it will be amount was gallons over a minute all right so let us move on to number four now these are the no calculator questions uh, f uh, be the function defined by uh, negative three through four as it's given uh, notice that f of 0 is 3, and then this is a graph of f prime. You see the graph of f prime is blah, 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 blah. Uh, line segment and semicircular is shown under what interval, if any, is f increasing? Now, f increasing in terms of a, f uh, increases if f prime is positive. Now, where do you see f prime is positive? From here. And none other. So, therefore, uh, when uh, I believe x is from negative 3 to negative 2. Technically, I guess I can include this one. Now, uh, number B. Find the x coordinate of the each point of the uh, its point of inflection. Uh, point of inflection based upon the first derivative Yes, we understand the change of F double derivative. But, if you were to look at it from first derivative point of view, it will be relative min or maximum of f prime. Now, where do you see that? 
we see one right here and we see another one right here relative maximum relative minimum so when uh, x equals zero and then two becomes our answer since they are looking for the x coordinate when x equals zero or two now c or actually we i use another color now green find the equation of the ta uh, line tangent line tangent what do i need i need slope and I need the point. The point is 0, 3. What is the slope? Slope is when x equals 0. Slope seems to be meaning the first derivative is equal to negative 2. So slope is also equal to negative 2. Then our equation now becomes y minus 3 equals negative 2 x minus 0 or anything in that format would be okay. Number four, find f of negative three. f of negative three, now, f of negative, negative three is right over here. Notice, uh, we knew the value f of zero is equal to three. We can do this one algebraically, and also we can do this one intuitively. First, we'll try to do this one intuitively. When f of 0 is equal to 3, but how did you get 3? Well, let's try to look into this area. This area is uh, going over 1, up 1, so base 1 times 1 divided by 2, this area becomes 0.5. Here, the area is 2 by 2, so 2 times 2 divided by 2 becomes 2. Or we can call it negative 2 if you go from left to right. Now, what it ended up being was from f of negative 3. Whatever the value was, you add it 0.5 to get to f of negative 2, but you subtract it 2 to get to f of 0. But f of 0 was equal to 3, so I can rewrite this one as f of negative 3 plus 0.5 minus 2 would have been equal to 3. Now, then by simple calculation, we will realize that it becomes 4.5. Now, that was choice D. I mean, the question D. How about uh, f of 3? I mean, f of 4. f of 4 is... Uh, from here, I have to go all the way up here. Then that means I need to calculate that area and that area. But notice, we can calculate that area uh, by the rectangle. And then the rectangle minus the semicircle would have been our answer. So rectangle minus semicircle. Rectangle obviously is 2 by 4. Or I should use this one. Rectangle minus the semicircle. That's the area that's being added on. Rectangle was 2 times 4, which was quite simple. How about the semicircle? It was pi. R was the 2. Radius was equal to 2. So 2 square, but since the semicircle, divided by 2. And when you calculate this one, that simply becomes 8 uh, minus 2 pi. So this is how much of the area that will be deducted from... Um, when f, uh, when f of uh, f of zero is equal to three, so in other words, what's going to be happening is from f of zero, when you subtract that area eight minus two pi, then we will end up getting f of four. Now, what does that mean? F of three was f of zero was equal to three minus eight plus two pi. That's the value that we we are looking at. 
that's equal to 2 pi minus 5 would have been our answer for f of 4. All right, let us move on to the next question. Here we have a uh, coffee pot has the uh, shape of cylinder. In case of cylinder, unlike the cone, you will realize the radius doesn't change. Whether you're in the top or middle or bottom, the radius doesn't change. Now, as shown in the figure above, let h be the depth of the coffee in the pot, and then uh, h in the function times t, blah, blah, blah. Now, the volume v of the coffee in the pot is changing at the rate of this much. In other words, that's v prime. Now, let's show that dh dt is this. How are we going to go for that? dh dt, knowing dv dt, then what we have to do is v is equal to pi r square h. Notice that r here is not a variable, it's constant, because no matter where you are in the cylinder, radius is always equal to 5. So we can rewrite this one as 25 pi h. So when you take the derivative uh, for each one, we'll end up getting uh, dv dt is equal to 25 pi dh dt. Now what is dv dt? That's right here. Negative 5 pi square root of h equals to 25 pi dh dt. By dividing it by 25 pi on each side, we will realize dh dt will be equal to square root of h. Pi cancels out, and 25 and 5 cancels out becomes negative, so there, negative h over 5. That becomes our answer. Now, b. Now, uh, given that h is equal to 17, and time t is equal to 0, solve the differential equation. How do you solve this? Oh, this basically, we just have to go for the antiderivative. Now, uh, that means we have to just get the dh dt uh, of the both sides. Now, let me try to just do it in another way. Well, by separating the variables, what we end up getting is dh over square root of h which is equal to negative one-fifth of dt. Now, as you take the uh, antiderivative of both sides, here, what's going to be happening is, we can assume that h to the negative one-half power. So by adding one, you will end up getting h. I'll just do it this way. By adding 1, we'll have h to the 1 half power, divide by 1 half. And here, we have negative 1 fifth t plus c, c being the constant. So now, uh, in order for us to solve for h, uh, what's going to be happening is this. Uh, as we multiply by 1 half, then h squared will be equal to uh, negative uh, 1 over 10 t plus c. c is still c no matter what you multiply. And then what we want to do is when t is equal to 0, h has to be equal to 17. That means 17 squared is equal to negative 1 over 10 times 0 plus c. Here we have c is equal to 289. That means our final answer becomes from here h squared is equal to negative 1 tenth t plus 289. That means h, if you want to solve for h, is equal to 289 minus t over 10 
But we gotta have a square root. All right. Now, at what time is t uh, is coffee pot empty? Coffee pot empty basically means t is equal to zero, or h is equal to zero. So then, all we have to do is see h is equal to zero. That means square root of 289 minus t over 10. Now, what's going to be happening with that? Then by squaring both sides, we will realize that 0 is equal to 289 minus t over 10. That means t over 10 must be equal to 289. That means t is equal to 2890. Now, at what time? Uh, I'm looking for the unit. Oh, t is measured in seconds, so this many seconds later will be our answer. All right, next question. Number six. The last question of 2003. Here we have um, f of x is equal to a given in this way. Piecewise function is f continuous. How can you know that it's continuous or not? Uh, then we have to remember the continuity. Continuity implies that the limit of the function as x approaches a has to be equal to f of a. Now, uh, simply put, uh, 3 is the division here. And when you plug in 3 on this one, when you plug in 3 in this one, will they match? That's basically what we're looking at. Uh, limit f of x as x approaches 3 from the right. Is that in fact equal to limit of the f of x from x approaches 3 from the left? Now, from the right, that means x has to be a little bit greater than 3. That means we're looking at this one. Uh, then 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. But is that also equal to uh, equal from the other side? It's a little bit less than Three, that means we are coming from here. So square root of 3 plus 1. Hey, that's also equal to 2. Uh, therefore, it is continuous. All right. Now, number B. Average value of this. Average value. How do you find the average value? We just have to take the interval for the uh, 0 through 5. Uh, average value is integral from 0 to 5 of f of x dx over 5 minus 0. Uh, but notice that uh, 0 to 5, we have 3 in the middle that's uh, hindering it. So what we end up getting is zero to 3 for the function square root of x plus 1 dx plus 3 to 5 and 5 minus x dx over 5. Now, when you try to evaluate the first one, uh, we end up getting this is like x to the 1 half power or x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So you're going to add 1 to the exponent, then we end up getting x plus 1 to the 3 over 2 pi. But by the reciprocal, uh, we'll, uh, because we have to divide by 3 over 2, it's as if we are multiplying by 2 third. 4, 0 to 3. Now, when you plug in this one, then you'll realize when you plug in 3, then x plus 1, so 2 times x plus 1, which is 4, and 3 over 2, over 3. When you plug in 0, then we end up getting 2 times 1 to the 3 over 2, over 3. Now, so here we have uh, 2 squared, uh, one, uh, 1 half means square root, so 
fourth the square root, uh, four square root, a uh, square root of four will be two. So the third power becomes eight times three becomes sixteen over three. And here we only have two thirds, which is equal to fourteen over three. That would be the value for the first one. How about the second one? Second one is five minus x. But when we take the in, uh, uh, integral of that, let me just erase this one. When you simply take the integral of that, you get 5x minus x squared over 2 from 3 through 5. So when you plug in 5, we end up getting 25 minus 25 over 2. When you plug in 3, we get 15 minus 9 over 2. Then when you calculate this one, we get 25 minus 25 over 2 minus 15 plus 9 over 2. Here, 25 minus 15 becomes 10. Negative 25 over 2 plus 9 over 2, in fact, becomes negative uh, 8. Now, so therefore we have our answer to be equal to 3. That was uh, almost done. Now, then we have to apply that here. Now, first portion was 14 over 3 plus 2 over 5. Then basically our answer becomes... This is 6 over 5, so we end up getting 20 over 3 over 5. And our final answer becomes 4 over 3 by dividing it by 5 and top and bottom. All right, now, number C. So that's given. Uh, it's differentiable. That means... Uh, slope, uh, the fact that it's a differentiable, that means not only it's continuous, then uh, when you plug in 3, they have to match, but also when you plug in, or when, you, when you take the derivative of, of, of each side, they also have to match up. That's what it means by um, differentiable. Now, we'll do this one in blue. What is uh, g prime? By the same interval, we get to realize for the first one, k over 2 square root of x plus 1 by the chain rule. And uh, power rule and all those things combined together. Second one is simply m. But the division was equal to 3. So when you plug in 3, then we will realize that k over uh, 4 must be equal to m. That means k is equal to 4m. Now, but not only that, in order for it to be differentiable, it has to be first continuous to continuous then, as we talked about it earlier, when you plug in 3, on each places, they also should be also uh, they also should be with each other. Then, by plugging in three, we will realize that k times three plus one has to be equal to m times three plus two. In other words, here we have two k must be equal to 3m plus 2. But since k was equal to 4m, uh, if, if I were to rewrite this one, it would be equal to 8a, uh, 8m equals 3m plus 2. Therefore, m here is equal to 2 fifths. Now, m is equal to 2 fifths. Then what's k? Since m is equal to 2 fifths, k would have been 
by what we know over here. K is equal to 4 times 2 fifth, which is equal to 8 over 5. And that's it, guys. I'll see you soon. I'll put up another video very soon.